Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Inside Battlefield. My name is Tom, Community Manager for Battlefield. And today we're talking Hourglass and Map Reworks. So the Hourglass Rework will be available in the next game update, which is 5.2. And that brings our commitment to rework all launch maps to a close. Today I'm sitting down with Shashank, lead level designer, who is a, a veteran for some of our uh, Dev Corners as well, and podcasts. Um, and we're going to discuss the recap uh, a recap for all the work that went into uh, reworking the maps and the last map, Hourglass. Shashank, welcome back. Oh, thanks for having me. This is good. See you again. Yeah. Spend nice. some time with you. Spend some time. Nice little nice little chat. Um, so it's summer. How, how are you doing overall? Oh, it's so good. Summer's in Stockholm are the best. Makes up for all the dark and cold winters. <laughs> the winter was... Quite long. Let's yeah. Okay. Uh, let's 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 keep keep it with summer summer vibes. Um, before we kick off and just go into an overview of the rework, is there, you know, any anything you you want to discuss or or talk about from the the levels team? Just as a as we look back on all the work we've done, all the new maps that came out with all the seasons. I mean, it's been great. Where the game came out, the maps are really big. And then instead of making new maps, we said, let's rework them, which is something I don't think we have ever done before. So that was a brand yep. new challenge for us where, hey, instead of making new maps, take a pause and see what we can improve, not only for the players, but even for ourselves where, what can we learn and what can we improve yep. for future maps? And that's been a big, I think it's a big long journey where with every rework, we have learned so much. And then we have used that for every new level that we have made. So if you look at uh, season five, it's it's inspired from BF4, a bit of Zavod, but also all the learnings we had from the map reworks has gone into that. And I think it's, you can see how much fun it is. Do you think, um, just looking at, okay, so five seasons, five new maps, do you feel we improved season upon season with each each level? I think... Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And Exposure was like... You know, the season one map was a yeah. a big highlight for a lot of players because it was... The vertical map. Yeah, at that exactly. time it was the, yeah. definitely the, the community favorite. But also as a team, I think we chatted about it on podcast episode three quite yeah. a while ago, where I think you mentioned for the team it was also a highlight. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun because it was, I would say, the first level which had a very grindy element in the last section of the server rooms where initially we were like, hey, is it going to be too grindy? And we were like, why not? Most of the maps are quite open, yep. lacks that grind, so why not make a space which is grindy? And we kind of toned it up a bit more if you look at uh, Stranded. Yep. I said, hey, let's make a grindy map where you have a mix of outdoor and indoor, the indoor is going to be quite grindy, the outdoor is going to be much more vehicles and fun like that. So, And I think with every level, we kind of said, uh, ask ourselves, like, what could be the flavor for this one? Same thing with uh, Season 5 can we do something like BF4? And that's how the whole conversation started. And that's how the map is the way it is. And I just, I just played control on it. And it's so much fun. It is a lot of fun. It's complete chaos. Chaos. Like, yeah. But that's exactly Especially what the we, last section. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that section, it's, it's nuts. Um, and then again, shout out to Control. I think for all the, the mid-season events we've done, this uh, Control seems to be the favorite game mode so far from the community. Oh, I was in, Afshin has done a great job. He's yeah. a level design, um, the more designer. Really good job on that one. Uh, he was on the podcast as well, just nice. to discuss yeah. a little bit about it. So, um, cool. So a lot has happened since uh, before season one, we made the commitment to rework all maps. Can you recap that decision for us? I mean, the levels are the levels, and they were meant to be like that. Yep. Right. So the decision early on was to make big maps, to make it for 120th players. And there's a reason why the maps are big. And there's a reason why we have a call-in vehicles, right? The call-in vehicles were meant to fix the problem of, it's a big map, it's quite open. How do players get from A to B? Hey, call in a vehicle, and that'll let you get from A to B. What we saw was, players actually didn't get into that one. Players still want to run from A to B, instead of, call a LATV, jump in the LATV, and then get from A to B. So that is something where what we thought would work on paper did not work mm. in the live environment, right? Yep. And as soon as that broke down, it just escalates where, okay, now we're on, on foot. It takes a minute to get from flag to flag. 
of course, there is no cover in between because these are bigger maps. And as you can, I told like early on where the bigger a map gets, the more there is the same amount of cover. It just gets spreads out on a big distance, like in open world games. And then you can have the density of yep. cover. So yeah, and we're like, okay, this is not working. Players are not getting into vehicles. They're not calling in as much as we expect them to do it. What are the solutions? Like cut some flags, shrink the whole level down, add some more cover. And it sounds quite easy on paper, but we also have multiple modes on each level. Okay, so if you touch the physical space of a map, then you have to rework all the modes, fix all the combat yep. areas, you have to move the flags, redo all the spawns. And then if you do a lot of changes, then you have to redo lighting as well. You have to rebake lighting. You have to redo nav mesh for the AI. So it's... There's a lot. There's a lot, right? Where yeah. Something which sounds quite trivial where, hey, just add more cover. It's, it's not, nothing is as easy, like, Especially given that everything is on the edge of performance, right? Yep. Where we're like, hey, we max out performance as much as we can, which means if you, want to, you can't really add anything. The question is, what do you take out and then swap yep. it with? So if you want to make a smaller space, okay, what flags can we cut? That's why if you look at, uh, as an example, the wall, which is a renewal, we had to cut two flags from that. And from that budget, we get some cover. Okay, we we kill two so, flags. Sorry, when you say budget, it's like a performance budget to asset to, asset count asset count to make Where, the the map run smooth. Exactly. Uh, okay. So imagine you have hundred units. You only have hundred units. You can't add hundred and fifty units because then you are fifty units over budget in terms of performance. So if you want to add more cover, you could lose something else. So With, the I guess the the difficulty was how do we we work that map new assets such as cover while making sure the gameplay exactly. slash performance stays smooth on all those maps? Precisely. So if you're saying that, hey, if you want to add some more cover over here, we could kill these two flags, we could redo conquest and Breakthrough, and then everything else, it just escalates. So you just have to basically shuffle a lot of stuff around, Yes. maybe remove some areas. And I think um, the, the main improvements we committed to in the package you just explained were traversal, Intensity, line of sight, pathing, and cover. Yeah. So you talked about some of those things as well. Um, and I guess this is going to be a podcast where I'm going to ask you about a lot of recaps, but just, um, yeah, ex maybe explain a little bit more in detail why we, we picked these or how that package comes together um, as you've, you've oh, yeah. started doing I mean, it. It's, it's all a combination, right? So on a fundamental level, the biggest thing was time to action and traversal where it took a lot of time for people to find other people even though we had 128 players. And also the next one is, okay, you, you, you captured a flag and then to capture the next flag, it was a long distance. So the question is, okay, players know, first players need to know how to get from A to B. Okay, now they know how to get from A to B. Then it's the question is, how do they get from A to B? Is it safe enough? Is it, does it take too long? Okay, we reduce the distance, but then it should also be safe to get from A to B. So we add some more cover and... If you bring flags too close, then do players fight from flag to flag, which is never what we want. Yep. We want combat to be isolated inside a flag. That's what happens is say you have flag A and you have flag B and they're too close, then players from flag A are going to fight players in flag B. And suddenly you have 360 combat where ideally what happens is you, you fight in flag A, you cap it, then you move to flag B and then you fight in flag B. That's what we want. So then you have to add line of sight between those two where to make sure you can't see from A to B. So you have a macro situation happening between flags and then in the micro situation of covers inside a flag. So it's it's a combination of things. It's like going from A to B, adding covers between A to B, making sure you can't see between A to B. So those are the three big factors. Okay. Um, and those are the, the three main ones, but inside that package we have traversal, intensity, line of sight, yeah. pathing and cover all combined in there as, as you just explained. Exactly, same yep. thing with intensity, right? Yep. Where imagine you're fighting in A and then you're getting shot from people from B. Then that's too much intensity. Yep. Right? That's why we never want to have combat across flags. Yep. Yeah. I remember in the beginning it was, I mean, like you just mentioned, it was, I think 360 combat was a, an issue where you exactly. never really felt safe on the map because the danger could come from all... From anywhere. From anywhere yeah. and we want players to have a a sense of where the danger could come from. Precisely. Okay. Um, I mean, it's a bit like if you play in the Souls game, there's a pattern to it where you know, okay, behind this wall, there is somebody. Yep. 
we'll never get to that level, but the more we can help the player understand, hey, engagements are going to happen in this space from that direction, then you can plan for it. You never want to get, you stand in a point and like, I can get shot from anywhere in 360. That's never fun. No, <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> um, so Hourglass is the final map to be reworked. Yeah. And as mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, that comes out in update 5.2, which brings all the map reworks to a close. Um, so then we have that full package alongside the new season maps. Can you speak to how do we works on, I guess as a summary, have played out uh, f- as from a perspective of the levels team? Yeah. Like which one are you most happy with? What are your expectations for Hourglass? Um, you mentioned that we took a lot of learnings from the reworks. Uh, reworks. What are some of those learnings? Um, so take it away. I mean, it's quite interesting where if you look at the first level we reworked was uh, Kaleidoscope. Smallest map. I the smallest yeah. one. So, I mean, even if you look back, I, we knew the biggest complaint was Hourglass. Yep. Right. So we know like what should we fix? We should fix Hourglass. But that's the biggest one and the most difficult one. So let's not start with that. Yeah. Let's take baby steps and learn on the way and then use those learning for the biggest one, which is our glass. So we started with Kaleidoscope and I would say we were quite conservative in that one. In hindsight, I think we could have pushed a bit more. The issue with Kaleidoscope was it's a very small map, which means it's quite, it's quite dense. So we already maxed out the asset on that one. Has a lot of transparency, has a lot of glass on the level, so it makes performance quite difficult as well. It's quite open, so you can see across the whole space. You can go to the rooftops, see the whole level. So what's interesting is each level had its own challenges where mm. you, you fix a level, then you imagine, oh, we learned all these things. Let's next open the next level. And they're like, oh, we can't apply it one is to one because it has its own set of problems, right? Where what worked on Kaleidoscope won't work on uh, Irreversible, which is... Uh, breakaway. Breakaway. <laughs> So it doesn't work one is to one. And yeah. then you, do, you, have to, you have to do a bit of research and you, you take a step back saying, okay, what is, how is it going to work for this one? So as I said, Kaleidoscope was fine and then the wall was okay as well. That was renewal. We knew the glacier was a problem, right? Where we removed the glaciers, we removed the, uh, the hilltop as well. Yep. Everybody liked the hilltop. But we're like, hey, we're just going to chop it, add some crevasses in the iceberg and we just went for it. And it worked because the way it was built, this is what I mean, where why is our glass much more difficult than irreversible, even though they're the same thing. One is snow and ice, one is desert. But the fundamentally it's built in a very different way where it was easier to fix breakaway than to fix our glass. That's why it's taken so long, where it's all sand dunes. It's all not getting into tech. It's all splines and there are a lot of splines and you move something and it affects everything else. Yep. Whereas with Breakaway, it's all 3D meshes and you can carve it out. You can move things around. It's much more, I wouldn't say easier. It lends itself for more customized a rework. I guess. Rework. Exactly. Yeah, okay. where, so that was quite interesting where it shows how you can make a not so popular map called Popular Reservoir where with Breakaway. Initially, it was like it was too big. Going from the town to the glacier, it takes too long. But then with the reworks, moving the whole uh, oil rig to the center of the space, I think it's completely transformed the map place, yep. right? Whereas if you look at Hourglass, we can't do that. We can't do a wholesale You can't just fix. move the entire city. No, you can't, right? <laughs> right? Because it's it's so many sand dunes. It yep. just escalates and escalates yep. and escalates. So we, I would say it's it's been a bit conservative on Hourglass as well, just because of the way the map has been built. It's In hindsight, if we could go back, we would build it differently. Just to be completely honest, no. yeah. But but that's also um, you always take learnings yeah. from a game once the content goes live, yeah. Um, because as you mentioned in the beginning, there um, are players play differently than we would expect. Yes. So from that perspective, there are changes we can make or would make in the future, but also that we already apply to. Yeah. Our as our an new example, maps. right where. With Hourglass, what we've done is, it's a bit of an experiment. I wouldn't give away too much, but the vehicle numbers have been tweaked. The vehicle numbers have been tweaked. Yes, where it's a big open level, Mm -hmm. a lot of sand. And the question is, why not just lean into it and make it something unique with the vehicle composition? So I'm just going to leave it at that. I mean, we will find out very, very Very soon. soon. Um, By the time this podcast comes out, 
I believe it will be available for play the next day. The next day, okay. So that's always, uh, you know, folks. for the folks listening, we do obviously record these podcasts in advance. So it's always a little bit of a guess about, you know, do we drop it, which week do we drop it in? But I believe once you listen to this, you'll be able to play the Hourglass Rework uh, tomorrow. So fingers crossed. Uh, All I'm going <laughs> to say is, if you like tanks, so you're going to have fun with this. Okay. Yeah. And Shashank is smirking now they're like <laughs> okay very but I've, i believe um you and i actually talked could be on the previous podcast could be on a previous deaf corner about that we as a team would review vehicle numbers yeah based on map based on mode and that we would tweak those to fit the map and the mode and exactly y- in a unique way across all the, the maps yeah. slash levels. So I mean ideally we won't we want to do a full wholesale pass on all of them, but there is so many limited resources, so many yep. limited time we have. So for now we focused on fixing all the levels, saying let's rework and okay. let's improve it. And then we our glass, it's a first step into let's tweak the vehicle numbers and see where it lands. So if you like tanks, you'll enjoy this map, which you already said. Do you feel our glass is a vehicle oriented map? With the rework, yes, that's the direction we're going with. Okay. And then the question is like, d- let's see how the response is. Maybe players like yep. it, maybe players hate it. The good thing is we can fix this all server size, so we can always tweak numbers quite fast. Based on the response we get from this, then we can look into other maps saying, okay, we did something unique with Hourglass. Players love it. Let's look into doing something else. I'm not promising anything, but that is an avenue we can explore. Okay. So I guess the request for players is, let us know how yeah. the vehicle balance slash numbers feel on Hourglass. Yeah. Um, does it feel good? More? Does it need less? And how would you like to see this play out on other levels as well? Precisely. And then we can uh, check and tweak as a team. Yeah. Because just because the levels, the level has been done doesn't mean we'll stop tweaking things. Yep. We're always tweaking things. Yeah. Like we are, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a buzzword maybe, but we are in a live service. Yeah we tweak as much as we can because the game is always evolving. Balance never stops. And that includes weapons, vehicles, maps, gadgets, specialists, all of it. And we can make a lot of those tweaks uh, in the live environment, which is actually something we discussed as well on three or four podcasts ago. Um, So if, if you as a listener are interested in that and how that works, I would recommend to check out that episode as well. So... Can you maybe summarize the main changes to the level without spoiling more vehicle stuff, I guess? Uh, like, I, I know the biggest one. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll start there. I believe we removed the stadium. Yes. So, Hourglass. Hourglass and Irreversible or Breakaway shares the same concept of make the biggest level we ever made mm-hmm. for Battlefield. And that's where it started from. That's why it is so big. And... Because it's so big, when you have to rework, like I said earlier, you're going to cut something. On Breakaway, we cut the hilltop. It's super nice. We like it. It's fun. But it had to go because it was not great for the level. Do we like the flag as it is? Yes, it's a fun flag. But with the reworks, if you want to shrink the whole level to make it more compact, improve traversal time, improve covers and other stuff, something has to give. Same thing on Hourglass. The stadium, super nice. We like it. Has Something has to give. So we're like, okay, if we shrink the level, what can we take out? Let's take out the stadium. Does it hurt? Of course it hurts. Do we want to bring it back at some point? Maybe. Not promising anything, but it's there. Yeah. It works. Like it, it's, it's built. It's built, right? So, And it was, <laughs> I think it was a player favorite. I, I've seen some comments where they hoped yeah. we wouldn't touch the stadium, but um, gameplay comes first. And even exactly. though the stadium looks super cool, and I think as a team, we're, we're a big fan of the stadium as well and like how it was built and the, the amount of detail that went into it. But for the rework, and I mean, I, I, I don't want to steal your words, but it, it didn't make sense for gameplay. It didn't really yeah. improve it. And I think that's the main thing we're after. As an example, reworks. right? Where yeah. initially we were like, can we shrink the whole level? Where can yeah. we bring the stadium closer to the, to the downtown space? Yeah. The issue is the stadium is in a Gen 5 location, right? So if we bring it close to downtown, which is a Gen 4 space. Sorry, to, to clarify for folks, Gen yeah. 5 is the PlayStation 5. Yes. And Gen 4 is like the older older, older consoles. Yeah. Uh, so if we bring anything too close, then it just tanks performance. Yeah. So we could not, even though the initial idea was like, just bring everything closer. But 
this map is very different from kaleidoscope in kaleidoscope we can have a bit of skyscrapers because it was built to work like that with hourglass it was meant to work where the downtown needs to be a certain distance from the stadium so we physically couldn't move it close okay. so the only option was to to chop it out unfortunately so that has gone we have simplified the oasis as well so the main flow now is from the smaller oasis to the arches to the downtown so downtown becomes a key element for the map but it's about the cqc inside the downtown area mm-hmm. with the height of the buildings as well what we have also done is the center of the map are the arches so like okay what can we do with the arches can we add some more interesting elements in that space so players can spend more time in that where you go from the oasis you stop at the arches spend some time in that we have added a massive crater to that space I'm, i won't spoil too much you can you'll find it out yourself there's a bit of underground location as well so a bit more cqc added in that space and then from there you can go to the downtown and spend a bunch of time in the downtown as well so the layout has been simplified where it used to go from the stadium oss oss village arches downtown so that that flow still exists and ex- and i guess the outside area where the stadium was that's gone it's more so, yeah. compact now exactly. but so still a, a a good flow from the village towards the downtown, downtown. exactly okay. that's yeah. what maintained here and we just reinforce that whole flow where okay let's just make sure when players go from each of this spot on the spot it's relatively safe is it as dense as some other maps no because it's still a bigger map where we are like let's not make it too small this doesn't need to be uh, like a season 5 or uh, stranded those are like compact maps and it would be a shame if all levels became samey where everything is compact and small because yep. we want to have levels which is for infantry like in uh, stranded when you're playing breakthrough there are no vehicles yep. because that's the experience right that's a flavor as an example whereas with our glass it is a big map and we want to keep it where it is a bigger map it's going to be more vehicle oriented map and i think it's better for the players to have a variety yep. instead of just having one flavor across the whole package and something that that also stands out is the war torn feeling i guess yeah. um with every we work we do i think during launch the maps were you know the war was starting to take place infantry yeah. combat moved into those areas and now as a as a as a package and including for hourglass the war has progressed you see the fighting has taken place so yeah. can you speak a little bit more about um maybe without spoiling too much uh what what that looks like i mean you rightly said where when the game launched we heard people saying the maps were very pristine but there was a reason because it was just the beginning of the war yep and now with the rework we have the opportunity to show what happens not after the war but maybe some like, time has passed and yep. you can see the aftermath of what's going on yep. with the war so army has come in they have set up some defenses you can see uh some outposts like you saw on kaleidoscope bombs fall across the space what happens when a big bomb lands on something the, cr- the crater the imagine. crater yep so you can see the effect of that so things like that is the military presence effect of combat and things like that yep. so a bit of narrative and storytelling which always helps and what and this this can be a personal answer for you what are your favorite new areas on the map or the areas we changed Oh I I love the arches the interiors of the underground blood arches which leads into the crater because the underground is completely new it's com- it, yep. it never existed before yep. so the whole idea is because the map is quite open there were a bit of complaint up from players where they want to get away from the chaos so it's like okay there's a lot of stuff happening outdoor can we give the players some indoor space i just love the way it leads from the arches into the crater and you can have a back and forth especially when you're playing breakthrough or rush that is a good of fun you can just stay the whole map in that area and then not leave it that's really nice if you like to if you like to i mean how i see it is there's three <laughs> is three sections of the map you have the oss section you have the central space and then you have the downtown and you can choose where you want to play of course i've i've played it i've seen it how do you feel about um something cool i think we did or at least um how it felt like to me is that the move towards the downtown area it feels a bit more edgy isn't the right word but there's a, a lot more um it's it's a bit tenser than before 
because you you come from like the improved arches area yeah and like you see the the path in front of you and well before it was maybe a little bit empty like it you was. said pristine. no no no, no not, not a little bit empty it was empty. <laughs> it, it was empty let's, <laughs> let's you, call a spade a spade you see the outposts yeah. so once you make your way from the arches like you see those skyscrapers in the distance you see the outposts come in you'll first see the crater as well so you know once you move down there it's like okay you're probably gonna get into trouble folks are waiting for you yeah. and it feels much more tense moving from area to area than it did before for sure and um i mean i think that was just a personal highlight for me for the rework of hourglass um so folks keep keep an eye on that as yeah. well i mean you made a very good point because you rightly said the the most annoying thing on this level was move, going from the arches into downtown <laughs> that whole traversal was just a suicide run yeah everybody was hiding behind that building the building on the left side that became this massive camping spot and we asked ourselves similar to what we did on orbital where we have a flag in between uh, the cryo yep. and the hangar we had this hilltop flag now like can we have a flag in between the arches and the uh, downtown we can take a pause over here figure things out and then move in and we also have improved a lot the space from leading into the downtown space that has improved tremendously yep. yeah for sure is there another area where you think um where you recommend players to just keep an eye out it could be and you don't have to spoil anything right no, now but it's, in, it's in, just the whole space between the arches and the downtown yeah. that that is where we spent a lot of time okay. we simplified the oss downtown has remained fairly similar because it worked we don't want to change just because yep. we want to change it so that hasn't been touched too much it had quite a bit of cover already but now yeah. it still has added, more uh, we had some more yeah. cover to okay. it but we just retained the waiters we turned the building to improve uh, how you enter into it it just makes more sense now you'll see it when you play it okay. so the flow into the buildings have been improved added some more covers around the buildings yeah move the flags to the ground so you don't have to keep going to the rooftop the thing is rooftop was a cool idea it was a cool idea but i still like it it just didn't work yeah it it didn't work out yeah. as, as as we intended i guess but um what is learning it it's a learning but also uh i think especially from just community videos there are some very fun gameplay moments yeah. that have taken place on rooftops shout out to those videos where there's obviously this one person camping on the rooftop completely unaware of everything happening around yeah. them and someone just <laughs> comes up from behind sometimes calls in a vehicle yeah. you know takes their time and just makes some cool I videos I mean you can still be on the yeah. rooftop but we're just saying that we won't put a flag on top because it's not fun for majority of the players it might be fun for some players but hey if you want to snipe you can still go to the rooftop yep. and you can snipe from there it's just we won't force you to go to a rooftop yep. that's what we're saying in terms of i guess if we look back at all the the levels we have now what what's what's your favorite it's not out yet ah <laughs> to to be continued have we discussed anything about the next season we have not we have not then i can say anything i mean you can tease yeah it's so, it's my favorite map okay <laughs> the one which is not out yet um uh, in due time in due time but yes it's it's Every, awesome everything should be revealed but it is spectacular yeah we have our community surveys that go out monthly so we at some point we ask players what is your favorite map i don't know if you've seen it shishank but i want to let you guess first which you think the player oh favorite map was my guess uh orbital i mean orbital works orbital was very high in the list i think it was top 3 okay uh, okay let's see i can tell you my top 3 for for the levels which are out there already uh keep in mind i like grindy map so stranded for sure uh i like orbital especially with the reworks it's pretty cool the runway is the one runway of my favorite really areas cool. in the game and i like exposure it's a bit it's a strange level it's not for everybody but it's quite unique is it, is it also uh maybe a it was a big moment for the team it was the first yeah. new map first season um so from that perspective it it guess it holds a special yeah. place in in our hearts as well definitely um but what's what's the <laughs> the what's player that? favorite map yeah. was uh, spearhead actually spearhead swedish map which oh, which is fun um that map maybe i didn't think of it because it was so difficult to make was it it was a very very hard level to ship 
Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? Because I think we can. I don't think we really talked about it on the podcast before. So, yeah, I'm actually, yeah. I'm it curious. was, let's, the let's, thing let's is, do it. It, was, it was supposed to be a larger level. Okay. It was supposed to have six sectors. And it was supposed to have more cubes. At some point it had, no, it had six cubes. One, two, three, four, five, six, six cubes. And at some point the tech guys came and told me like, we can't ship six cubes. I'm like, why? <laughs> Performance. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Gotta get rid of yeah, the cubes. So, and then also be like the whole thing about, hey, why are we making such a big map? We have clearly, players are not engaging with this. Can we make it smaller? And then, okay, what do we cut? So the same thing again, let's cut. So then we ended up with, we had to cut four cubes, which was quite annoying because we had a really good narrative to it. Yeah. Every cube had its own story, what was being done in it. So we had to like get rid of all of that stuff, which was quite painful as well. And then the biggest struggle was the whole thing with this level was, the interior and exterior. We want to have a strong contrast where interior was going to be CQC mm. and exterior is going to be quite open. But quite open is quite difficult. Yep. Where it has to be open, but also should give enough cover. So the amount of time we spent having this balance where it should be open, but provide cover, line of sight, it was very, very hard. Yeah, this would be one of those like hourglass level of, yeah. <laughs> which then makes it amusing to me that it was a difficult level to make yeah but players um liked it at least from from what we've heard and what we surveyed yeah. so that is cool to see then as well. i'm glad that the effort paid off for yeah sure definitely. i mean visually i think it's one of the prettiest level we have shipped it just looks beautiful yep i'm not sure is the lighting whatever the artist had done it is looks phenomenal and again, I want to give a shout out to the, uh, the f- preseason event with the rocket strike yeah. on the cubes. That was, I think it's still one of my personal favorite moments in the game. If you didn't know it was going to happen, yeah. it was kind of a what the hell moment. So do we usually build levels like we know what we want to build? When we build them, are they usually much larger at first and then we just... um cut them down because you mentioned that a few times so I, yes I don't know if you just no. start building something cool and then you just take away from what doesn't work I mean it, it takes time to change habits right and yeah we got in the habit of making large levels and we made so many large levels so there's a bit of time taken to switch your mindset that's why yeah. I, with uh, with this one it took time to switch our brains where yeah. hey why are you making a bigger level but then with the newer ones like season five, we knew exactly how big it was going to be. So with season five, the map was pretty much done when it was just green lit. And it kind of didn't change much, which was for us like super nice. But when we go back and we looked at, hey, let's look at how it was when we green lit the, the level and the paper design. The final design is pretty much very similar to how we said it's going to be. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like reclaimed was one of our easier maps that we built? Or? I wouldn't say Reclaim was easier. I would say it's the least changed level where we, we didn't do any wholesale surgery on it. Hmm. Like on uh, Lights Out, which is... Spearhead? Spearhead. <laughs> Spearhead had a lot of change. Hey, let's do this. And it went... A lot of people were not happy with the... <laughs> let's say where there was a lot of struggle between design and art. Okay. where we were changing things which then affected art which was not good for them because then they had to rework all their stuff so there was a bit of pain in that one with Reclaim there was none of that there's always going to be a bit of back and forth but yep. it didn't have any major changes as an example there were way more trees in the level way way more trees and at some point on, on Reclaim on Reclaim and we just couldn't do it for technical reason and then we had to go in and say okay how many trees can we chop off because <laughs> No pun intended, but we had to do it where it's, we had like, it needs to perform at 60 FPS. How did we get it? Yep. So that was a bit of, took a bit of pain over there. Otherwise, there was a bit of uh, struggle in getting the forest flag to work where it was meant to be CQC, but then people took in vehicles anyways, and then people would climb on the rocks. So that space was quite difficult to, even the thing is, if you look at the space, it's a very simple space. 
but we spent a lot of time on that flag, some reason to make it work. So even though it's simple, it took a lot of time. Whereas the central two flags, the warehouse flags, they worked quite easily. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to spend too much time on that one. So the simplest flag was the most difficult flag. Sometimes it works out that way. That's how it works. And then uh, season six is the same thing as season five where we had a plan and we stuck to the plan and it's going to be phenomenal. I'm I'm happy we stuck to the plan. To be continued. To be continued. Uh, sadly, can't talk about it now because yeah, it. exciting yeah. stuff in store. Um, I think there was a, we digressed a little bit in the end yeah. uh, with a, a nice side discussion, but I think that's what the podcast is for as well. So um, is there anything else Um you would like to mention about Hourglass, um, just maps in general before we uh, go to eating some cookies? We learned so much. We learned spaces, we learned distances, we learned navigation, cover, traversal, line of sight, journey the player takes, the storytelling in each flag. How do we make each flag stand out? How do we make sure there's a combination of interiors, exteriors? How do we make sure players can hide from choppers if they want to? How do we make sure players can flank tanks if they want to? So all of these things are going to go into the next game. It's only going to make it better. Okay. That's great. Um, and I think right now we have a quite an exciting package of levels as well. With all the reworks now complete, five maps, and obviously season six is on the horizon with another map incoming there which we will talk more about in due time. I'm so excited so to talk about will that. probably be back. Yes. Do you, uh, do you want to eat some cookies? Let's eat some cookies. But you're going to mute me because I'm not going to chew on... No, no, no. no. There is no one. muting when we eat cookies. That's, <laughs> that's part of the deal. Um, and we do a little live unboxing here. Normally we have, uh, or often we have a, a Swedish uh, speaker on the podcast. We do not have one now. And they can usually tell me if my pronunciation of the cookies is off or not. No, obviously, yeah. What is this one? This is uh, Milano Plupard. <laughs> I say it wrong on purpose, but here you go. Uh, I don't know if we've, we've okay. had one of these before. I have no idea what this is. Let's try. Oh, wow. It smells a bit vanilla. Yeah. Hmm. Good. Actually, really good. These are really good. For cookies coming out of plastic bags. Oh, there is um. Yeah. The filling in the middle. I don't know how you say this in English. I can say the Dutch word spice for any Dutch listeners if we have them. Um, it's really good. Is it like a marzipan? Kind of. Is it's almonds? Is it not almonds? What is it? Oh yeah, it's it's almond filling. Then it's a marzipan. Is that is it hmm. is marzipan almond filling? Is did I just learn something new? Thought it was different. I think so. Hmm. <laughs> I thought it was just pure sugar, but I don't know. Uh, Reply in your comments. <laughs> Let us know what is what's the difference between almond filling and marzipan. Um, but yeah, damn. I imagine Shushank, you'll probably be. Uh, Back at my desk later to see if, they, if, they, if there are some left. I'm just going to take some with me when I go back to my desk. <laughs> okay, these, these are really good. Especially with a coffee, which I will probably get after this. Mm. Um, I wish I drank coffee. I feel like I'm missing out on a whole part of life by not drinking coffee. Oh, that. Uh, so you didn't drink coffee at all? I don't drink coffee. Oh, or okay. tea. Like, or tea? No. Water? Flavored water? No. Water or alcohol, that's it. <laughs> no tea and coffee. Okay. <laughs> if I want to spend money on something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, we have a barista here in the office and that coffee is really good. Mighty fine. And the barista is actually on vacation right now. You're complaining about that. I was complaining about it earlier because <laughs> First suddenly problems. going back to like machine coffee, it, it, it just hits a little bit different. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, folks, we are, di we are digressing. We are digressing. So, We're just going to end it here for now. Um, the cookie was really good. This is, I keep saying this, but this is one of my favorites, I think, so far. I'm a big fan of marzipan filling. Or? Or almond filling, whatever. What is it called in Dutch? Spice. Spice, like spice melon? Spice, yeah, kind S -P -I -C -E? of. S-P-I-C-E? No. Uh, I-J-S? S-P-I-J-S, spice? 
Okay. I barely speak Dutch anymore these days. Sometimes I have to think a little bit. How do I? Um, anyway. Anyways. That's all we have for you today, folks. So thank you for being here with me again, Shashank. Uh, thank you so much was for having ni- me. It was nice to have you back. Uh, I think thanks, we a- thanks for the cookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm here just for the cookies. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, man, that's what everybody keeps saying. I think people just want to hang out, but no, they know I have cookies. Um, so folks, if you have comments on today's podcast or just in general, get in touch with us on socials at hashtag inside battlefield or you can email us at podcast at battlefield.com and as a reminder the hourglass rework is available in the update 5.2 which i believe by the time you listen to this will come out tomorrow so exciting obviously patch notes should be available as well there's a lot of stuff in there changes cool stuff go check them out and then from all of us here at our battlefield studios stay classy and ptfo Bye-bye. You can say bye also. Oh. (laughs) Have a nice summer. Have a nice summer. And I'll see you back for uh, season six. Let's go. Bye-bye, folks.